was an old man, a neighbour of ours. He had what I say, 34 acres of land and he had an old thatched cottage and the roof fell in. Myself and my brother, we used to rent the land from him. And when he died, he gave me the land. So that's how I uh, I got into farming on my own account. First of all, I was uh, serving my time as a mechanic. I fell on ice and I had a, got an infection in one of my eyes. So I was spent a year in Dublin in the Iron Ear Hospital. I, I wouldn't be advised to go back uh, to, the, to be a mechanic as the strain a bit too much. So that's how I continued on farming. I used to have suckler cows at that time and uh, used to have a couple of calves sucking on each cow. I had 15 or 16 cows and some dry cattle as well. I was happy enough farming and we got on fairly well. My father, he used to tell us when we were young a story about there's a lease down in his land, just down the road here. And it was built up around about us, a little square field. And there was like a half an egg now shape in one corner. Like He had seven sheep and a horse and a cow. And he ploughed that field to sow potatoes in it. And when he did, the hoofs fell off the horse. And the horse died eventually. And the cow died. And I think five sheep died out of seven. The priest said he'd come over the next day. And he brought his prayer book with him and a hole of water. And he'd bless the field. But he started down at the head of the village there and he came up and he was reading prayers and shaking all the water all the way up to this field here. And he went around about the square there and he told them never any of his family to put a spade on it, to dig it, but they could cut grass in it. And he... he he warned his father, and my father told us never to dig anything in it or ploughed, that uh, there was no explanation for it. But sometimes, uh, maybe in places like this, there was children buried or something. So that's all the information we have about it. And, Joe and myself, we used to help each other out and we grew uh, vegetables and potatoes and sowed potatoes. And at that time, there wasn't too many doing that and uh, it was easy to sell what we had. First time I met Mary, I met her at the market where it was selling some vegetables. And this girl uh, introduced me to her. So anyway, we agreed to, uh, to meet again on the Sunday night in Abinac My Hall, where there was, used to be a dance at that time. So. That time, there was no cares much. It was bicycles. So it was about four miles to where Mary lived. And I cycled up and two, 
two of my friends, two neighbours, they came with me. The three of us cycled up to Abbey. We, we danced all night and had a great night. That Sunday morning, when I got the paper, I had the crossword done. And when I checked it, I had won a hundred pounds and uh, a turkey for the Christmas. That night in Abbey, Mary was selling tickets for the Hurling Club and I won the raffle there as well. So the priest uh, said to me, when I was going out the door, when I got my coat to go home, he said, oh, you won't need any coat tonight, he said. <laughs> so this man, he was a, a friend of Mary's. He went up on the stage and he said, there's a man here tonight that he won the crossword this morning, Sunday morning, and uh, he won the raffle here tonight. And by the looks of things, he said, he, he's got a woman as well. <laughs> you'll know what they mean, you'll be fine now. Just stay close to me and make good hope. Walk with you through everything. Blood and earth. Take your time, eh? It's not a bad attitude. The most amazing thing that uh, happened to me was when I was a, a young fella, myself and my friend, a neighbour over the road, he's in, in England with years. We heard talk of the quiet man coming to Ballaglunan, John Wayne, and he was my idol. See here on my right, uh, there's a, a sign up here, Castletown. This was, this is, is Ballyglunan, but for the quiet man they called it Castletown. I always liked John Wayne, big man, but I couldn't believe I was standing beside him in Ballyglunan railway station. So uh, I remember John Wayne, he, he, the train pulled into the station and John Wayne got out and John Wayne said to him, I want to go to Inish Free. Inish Free, ah, five So there must have, there was a, a caravan there as well where they were photographing and all that. John Wayne, he must say it about 15 times I want to go to Inish Free till they got the right pitch or right sounder. So anyway, he sat up in the sidecar and there's a bridge, a railway bridge that goes, you can go under the bridge to get to the other side. Like The train back down to the bridge, there was a fella up in a high the field was high inside and he had one of those cloaks over his head. That's what they used to have that time when they'd be taking photographs of something happening. And uh, there was a cow in the, up in the land, up in the corner where, where he was. And the cow was looking. She didn't know what was under the, co the cover. So the cow made a sweep for the, the fellow with the cameras and he, he just dropped them and ran and the cow after him. So, uh, we were the two nearest to where it happened like, and the man with the camera asked us to keep the cow away until he, they had to, they had to, they were, what they were doing, the sidecar was going under the bridge when the train had been coming. 
and out the other side like but uh, they had to redo it again onto the what the cow done so we were standing there talking to John Wayne and Barry Fitzgerald it was a great thrill to meet them, the two of them I remember in 1947, one Monday morning, seven or eight young men from the area went on the train to England to get work. And there was lots of tears being shed here, parents and brothers and sisters leaving them all goodbye. Anyway, my brother Peck and a friend from Dunmore, they were working down pit for about nine months. And I, I remember that my mother and father, they were really worried in case anything had happened in the pits. But they used to pray that he'd get uh, a job out of the pits. So anyway, that happened. He got, a, he was himself and his friend, they were on top. They didn't have to go down. And this evening, they were tidying up, keeping the, bits and pieces of coal cleaned up, put in a heap. So they were waiting for the bell to ring at six o'clock. And they, they went to get their shovels. One had one in one corner and my brother was in the other corner, the platform. So anyway, my brother stooped down to pick up his shovel and there was a crane, big crane, passing overhead and a big lump of coal fell down and struck him in the back of the neck. And that was it. He was killed instantly. May he rest in peace. It was a sad do. So he was brought home from England to this station here, the remains came in to Ballyglonan, Castletown, and there was a big crowd here for the funeral. And there was lots of tears shed, I remember. And they took the coffin from the train and carried it on their shoulders, the young men that was here. And for a half mile down the road, and then they put it in the hearse and brought them to Hosties in Corofin. And they took out the coffin again and carried it on their shoulders down to the church. So it was a very sad affair, thinking back. So I'm, since that, there was more that came, but they used to say that he was nearly one of the first that came over, one of the first remains that came home from England over to Ballygloon. We're 49 years married, uh, the 22nd of February, and we celebrated our anniversary Sunday. We went to Dublin for the night and day. So, up to your son, Thomas. Up to our son, Thomas. And we went out for dinner. And that's it. <laughs> so go on, you. 
was so we had 49 good years, even though I suppose there was highs and lows, but uh, the high, the lows, the highs took over from the lows. And uh, we have seven children in that 49 years, all scattered, all married. We had a good life together and everything went fairly good for us during our lifetime. So next year we'll be 50 and we'll have a big hoolie. <laughs> <laughs> if with, if with we're God, alive. With God's help. <laughs> um, that's, that's it for me. <laughs> you continue. You've been wrong. See?